So one thing never fails to entertain me, and that is the process of scientific evolution. Let that one ring for a second. It is really easy to forget that there was a period of time when modern science, well, it just wasn't. It wasn't modern, and you might even be able to argue it wasn't yet science because the specific discipline wasn't invented yet, like paleontology. Paleontology was established around 1813 when French baron Georges Cuvier launched his theory that earlier species, now extinct, were killed off by floods that happened every so often. Geology wasn't established much earlier. The word geology, which by the way, comes from Greek words that mean earth speech, was first used by Ulysses Aldrovani in 1603, but didn't come into real use until the mid to late 1700s when William Smith, Mikhail Lomonosov, and James Hutton really established the discipline. Today, some of the earliest discoveries, or well, discoveries, are popularized as memes and have become a means of amusement and laughter despite them being actually representations of social beliefs, curiosity, and really the first inferences of some forms of scientific questioning. I'm totally guilty of viewing some of these early attempts and laughing myself, but then I remember that today, we are still making some attempts at interpreting things that are way off course from actuality. If you stay with me to the end, I'll tell you a story about that and the amazing life of the Anomalocaris and the Opabinia. But first, let's start with the discovery of the world's first and only unicorn. And no, we don't have one in our collection. Welcome to Curious People Wanted. I'm Dr. Darren Raymond Locke, curator of the Barnum Museum. Yay, unicorns! I think the overarching understanding about unicorns today is that they are elusive, fantastical, and imaginary creatures that look a lot like a horse with a large horn. There is also another class of unicorn, which is depicted in art as far back as the ancient Assyrian period called an alicorn, which is basically a unicorn with wings. But unicorns weren't always a kindly beast that appeared to maidens and was a symbol of purity, grace, strength, and hope. In the Middle Ages, illuminated manuscripts called bestiaries were made, and these books really combined stories of both real and imaginary animals. The animals were used as allegories for Christian value systems and moral behavior and to reinforce faith. The unicorn specifically was actually included as an allegory for the death of Christ. But, interestingly, unicorns were commonly called ferocious, capable of killing an elephant, and were incredibly fast. Their horn was prized because it supposedly had the ability to detect and mollify poison if it was in contaminated food. It also supposedly had other properties as well, like curing fevers, delaying aging, and teeth whitening, among others. Imagine people surprised when a real unicorn was discovered in 1663. Sprung that one on you, didn't I? In 1663, a bunch of fossils were found in a gypsum quarry known for its Ice Age deposits in Sweckenburger, Germany. The fossils were taken to nearby Quinlinburg and placed in the care of Johann Meyer, the magistrate of the town and also an astronomer in his own right. The bones were held there for about five years until a Prussian scientist named Anno von Gericke reconstructed the skeleton and offered an idea of what the animal would have looked like. Small aside, von Gericke was a pioneer during the scientific revolution. He offered theories of absolute space and demonstrated physics concepts like the vacuum, atmospheric pressure, and the electrostatic repulsion. I say this only to indicate he was a real reputable scientist. Von Gericke's reconstruction was ultimately lost and is only known through secondary sources that reproduced his idea. In 1704, it appeared in a book by Michael Bernhard and was republished again in 1749 in a book called Protogaea, written by Gottfried Leibniz. The problem is that it is unclear whether these drawings on von Gericke's reconstruction were made from his notes and sketches, or if they were drawn from descriptions by Johann Meyer. 
Regardless, the reconstruction became known as the Magdeburg Unicorn or the Gerica Einkorn. Today, it's been hailed as one of the worst fossil reconstructions in human history. And it is pretty bad since it combined fossilized elements from different species belonging to the mammoth steppe biome and also added to the mix recent bones of different animals. The reconstruction includes a skull of a juvenile woolly rhinoceros, the legs and shoulder blades of a woolly mammoth, and the tusk of a narwhal. The original species of the rest of the skeleton is pretty much unclear. A model of the reconstruction is on display at the Natural History Museum in Magdeburg. So if that reconstruction wasn't weird enough for you, another one from the same time period also is a good reminder that while exotic species of animals were imported into Europe by the Romans, that even a millennia and a half later, many of the animals still hadn't been seen by a huge number of people. One of the earliest examples I know of, people attempting to make statues or ornaments of animals they have never seen, dates to 530 BC on a crater, which is a large urnish thing from Hochdorf. The crater was made of bronze by Greek or Phocaean craftsmen. It was so large that it is believed to have been shipped up the Rhine in pieces and reassembled on arrival. It is topped by three lions, one of which was damaged or lost and had to be replaced. The replacement is pretty universally seen as made by someone unfamiliar with a lion and looks much more like a cat than anything else. Almost 2,200 years later, this sort of thing was still happening. So let's explore the Lion of Gripsholm Castle. Sometime in the 1800s, a lion was transported to Sweden. We don't know much about it, past that, honestly. Some suggest it was a gift to King Frederick I from the Bay of Algiers in return for a tax Sweden paid to avoid Barbary pirates in the Mediterranean Sea. That seems not to be 100% true as that lion was quickly sent to the Elector of Saxony. Regardless of why the lion was there, it was one of the first to go to Scandinavia. He supposedly kept at the Royal Game Park in Stockholm and died in captivity. There are two theories on what happened then. One suggests that the taxidermist prepared it with the intention it would only be seen from one angle, while the other suggests the taxidermist, who had never seen a lion before, was given only bones and pelts and therefore did the best he could based on heraldic forms of lions on crests. That also doesn't really add up because the skull and teeth are incorrect. I just feel bad for the poor thing since it went from being king of the jungle to being dubbed the world's derpiest lion. People will laugh at the poor thing for years to come. Okay, so while both these stories provide a huge amount of entertainment, I'm pretty sure three or 400 years from now, someone will look back on our modern science and find meme-worthy fodder. One example are the crazy creatures that were born out of the Cambrian explosion 540 million years ago. The first is the Anomalocaris, a top-notch predator who was soft-bodied and completely bizarre. Okay, so there were three fossils found, all of which confused everyone. The first was the remains of two headless shrimp. This fossil is what actually gave the creature its name, anomalo, meaning strange, and charis, meaning shrimp. The idea that there was something eating the heads of shrimp was interesting, but then there was a second fossil which looked like a frisbee with a hole in the center that made scientists think, gee, well, this is a weird jellyfish. And then the third fossil looked like a sort of smashed sea cucumber or a very squished sponge. I should say that Precambrian fossils are difficult because they are soft-bodied creatures which are not easily preserved, so the record is going to be difficult at best. But the first fossils of the Anomalocaris were found in 1886, with subsequent examples pulled out of the Burgess Shale in Canada. Over the course of the next century, research coalesced. It wasn't until the 1980s, though, that Harry Whittington realized that all three fossils were different parts of the same animal. Another one that couldn't be made up except by someone with a really, really sick relationship with Frankenstein and Mr. Potato Head is the Opabenia. It also dates to the Cambrian period about 505 million years ago and has five 
protruding mushroom-looking compound eyes and a lobster claw-like thing at the end of a proboscis. It was also only about 2.5 inches long. While these are older than that of either the Magdeburg Unicorn or the Lion of Gripsholm Castle, it still goes to show you that there is still a lot we don't know and modern science quickly becomes yesteryear science. Please like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, and feel free to comment if there's a topic you'd like me to explore more. But most importantly, remember to stay curious.